Hey, welcome to Leaving Crazy Town with Finn and Sarah. Sarah, what are we going to talk about today? I will give you the mic. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to Leaving Crazy Town. Finn and I today are going to talk about a topic that definitely comes up in the realm of codependency. I love all Finn's face. It sure does. It's We're going to talk about giving and receiving. And why this is part of codependency, a variety of reasons. Sometimes codependent people overgive. Sometimes, and especially we're going into the holidays. How many people do you know that in January they're like, oh my God, my credit card bill? Because they haven't been able to tolerate their own feelings around maybe not getting a super expensive gift or not getting tons of gift for their kids or whatever. It, I hear this all the time in January after Christmas. Go so ahead. we want you to pause for a minute. Yes. This is what we're going to do. Sarah and I are each going to give three things. Um, we're going to say three things that come up for us when we're giving and three things that come up for us when we're receiving. Yes. So why don't you pause, write out three things yourself and think about it like, are you more comfortable with giving and receive or receiving yes. or vice versa or does yes. neither affect you? And, uh, you know, write those three things down and see how they compare to ours. Yes. All right. And really, how does it feel? I mean, some people love to give. Some people don't like to give. Some people like are very uncomfortable receiving and some people love to receive gifts. So just think about all of that. Like Finn was just and saying. write it down. It's important to know, especially now going into the holidays, because you don't want to just impulsively respond in some way that might not come across well. But if you're a firm believer in ignorance is bliss, <laughs> turn this it. off now and just carry on. <laughs> don't listen to anything we say. <laughs> we don't have anything to say anyway. All right, Sarah, what's the first thing that comes up for you when you think about giving? All right, so I love to give. So not a one word answer? All right. No, I'm no, kidding. <laughs> I mean, I love to give, and I've always been that way. And, you know, so my issue at times has been in the past, like when I think about my son's Christmases, or I have had times when I've definitely overgiven or given, like, inappropriately. I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's like, like giving a gift to someone when they're just like, why are you giving me a gift? Because out of my own, maybe fear of not being liked or fear I owe somebody something or, so I really had to look at that. Like when I give come from like my soul, my center, does this feel good? Is this just really sincere or is there some hidden motive? I okay. want them to like me or whatever. All right. So what's number one I'm rambling. that comes up for you? When you're giving. Okay. Feeling like, what's the motive? What's the motive of the giving? At times, because I can overgive. All right, that's okay. it. So for me, the first thing that came up for me when I thought about how I feel when I'm giving is joy. Yes. What's the second thing? <laughs> joy is definitely huge. It's um, mine. Don't even try. I know, but it is. Well, I'm just going to say one thing. Mark. Trust me, I have more wordy word I know, answers for the next. Go. But we the first response when I did this exercise that I came up with was joy. Okay. We're having some so, gender differences. Issues what's now. number two for you? Okay. Number two is this another paragraph. feeling of control or power. Mm. Like, now I don't owe them anything. Yeah. Like you're managing the situation. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm managing it. Yeah. All right. The second thing that came up for me was fear. Okay. Fear they won't like it. Oh. Fear I let them down. Fear they'll be disappointed. Got it. Okay, good. Um, third one is, um, I literally had motive and that was my first one. So um, I'm going to have to think for one second. In giving, I guess what Finn said, like the joy factor, what happened in, in the last week is a friend of mine doesn't have tons of dough and she's throwing Thanksgiving. And because I had extra money, I bought her this super funny card and I put a bunch of cash in and I mailed it off to her. And that just felt so good and joyous. So 
Yes. I mean, giving can be totally joyous and she was so happy to receive it. And she said, I'm working on my receiving. So yeah. it all really worked out. So yes, when it feels kind of pure, joy is definitely a thing. Yeah, yes. pure joy. Yes. All right. So my last one was um, the, it was a, a basically a quagmire of the feelings I have around giving Got it. are, there's a very big difference for me. If I, so a lot of times people say to me that I give good gifts. Because what I do is I listen to people all year and I try to come up with something that I think is meaningful. Yes. And sometimes I can't. Yes. And if I go out and buy an obligation gift Ugh. and I hadn't like had that inspir it's not an inspirational giving, it's an obligation giving. Oh, that's such a difference. It feels gross to me. I don't I don't like that at all. If I had my way, what I would really love to do is to just be like, oh, these three people popped up for me this year. Those are the people I'm giving gifts right. to. Because that's what I want to do. Yes. And anything else it it just feels less than truthful. So I don't have that pure joy feeling I was talking about earlier. No, it's really, you're bringing up a great point, which is like the distinction between feeling obligated and just feeling like, you know, when I give gifts to people or I get you a t-shirt or whatever, yeah. we just like, it's spontaneous. It feels good. It comes from a pure place. And then I think of like the moms of kids that have to get gifts to the teachers and gift, not that you wouldn't, but like all these obligation things. And what's the fine line there? Like, yeah, I'm sure something's appropriate. Like that's just something to think for yourself and looking at yourself in your own codependency. Do I feel okay giving this kind of obligation gift or am I doing it because I'm worried they're going to be mad at me or what? what is the underlying You know what issue? I used to do years ago? You just reminded me of it. Would I would always wait till last minute and then Christmas Eve I would buy everyone socks. <laughs> I can't believe I just remembered that. But I was really bad and self-centered back then. All right, so we're All right. Gonna, we got to keep moving. Keep so moving. Receiving. receiving. What uh. does it feel like to receive? My stomach literally just got sick, even hearing the word. I am really, this is something I'm practicing, practicing, practicing. I've been in a relationship now for like over six months. He's very kind and giving. Oh my God, has it been uncomfortable? Just paying for stuff all the time. I know that sounds crazy, but I've been independent for a long time and it feels like he's trying to control me. <laughs> of course he is. <laughs> really working on because it's not very respectful to got to argue for like 10 minutes at dinner like so i'm really practicing thank you so much that's very kind and then i'll say gee can i buy this next time or whatever yeah but it is very uncomfortable i'm going to tell you simply it's because of my history my dad literally did control me with money and i think i just get a little activated yeah. So receiving with feeling like I don't owe someone anything is key because it's remembering this person wants to give this stuff. There's no agenda. Okay, so what was number that. one? Because you just went, <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to keep it simple and we only have so much time. Okay, number one was do I owe them now? Yeah, is so my feeling thought. obligated. Feeling to, obligated okay. even though just letting it happen. So my number one feeling, like I literally, somebody said to me the other day, I bought you a gift and I'm like, Ugh. <laughs> I get riddled with fear and it is so clear to me why. Okay. When I was a child and all I wanted was a baseball glove, I got a ring. Oh, the ring story. The ring oh story. Oh, my God. And I literally, and, you know, a lot's come to light since then where I think my dad got drunk and didn't get me a gift, so my mother gave me something I hurt. <laughs> like, it, this awareness kind of hit me as an adult. But I was oh. very visibly disappointed that I got a ring and my mother went nuts on me for being oh, selfish unappreciative. and unappreciative. And I think it's because she was giving up something of hers. Right. So that experience at 56, <laughs> and I think I was five when that happened, and I remember it clear as day, I'm scared to death because I cannot fake it. I have a sister oh. who literally can get the same gift 50 times in an hour, and she will act like it has been dropped by God. It's such a gift. Not me. I cannot hide 
Yeah. The disappointment. So I'm scared to death that I'm not going to like something oh. somebody gave me and I'll open it and be like, so I always want to open gifts alone. So anyway, just... fear. Fear because my childhood trauma is there and... Yes, and literally it is a codependent thing. Absolutely. Because it's like, I'm worried about the other person's feelings. Right, I was taught as a child that you can't have your own feelings. You have to be selfless and yes. think of how everyone else is feeling about how you're feeling. Yeah. <laughs> so adjust those Perfect. feelings to make sure everyone else feels good about it. Oh my God, which is, that's a whole other, okay. Um, just say thank you. So this is what I've been thinking a lot about. Is what this if, your feeling? What yeah, this is my second issue that comes up okay. around receiving. It's like, instead of defending myself or arguing or thinking now I've got to buy them something because I'll say to my sweetheart, okay, I owe you now. He's like, no, you, you don't. It's not about She's got a balance sheet going <laughs> her balance. gifts. One gift, two gift, three. How, do you do it by cost too? Because yes, I know that, yeah. like, everyone is. Wait, it's a twenty dollars. Oh, my gift's less than yours. You know, whatever. <laughs> because this is the thing. I know how good I feel when I give a gift, and I'm ripping him off from feeling that good feeling by my arguing. So it's just thank you. That's so sweet. Zip it. Yeah, my girlfriend Zip bought it. me lunch the other day. She goes, please let me buy you lunch. And literally, I think it tasted awful because <laughs> I was like trying to swallow the idea that my girlfriend is buying me lunch. It was so horrifying for me. But she was so sweet in the way she's like, I want to do this for you. And I'm like, it's not right. It's not how I was brought up. You should not be buying me lunch. I am buying oh. lunch. But you know what? I... We're going through very similar things. I took it in stride, <laughs> and I let her buy me lunch, and yes, it was a little, you know, masculating or whatever that word but is. That's but that's the, isn't that so interesting, though, because that is the belief. Like, I know I Tom says that sometimes. Well, this is the way it is. This is the way it should be. I'm like, in what, in what decade? Yeah. Like, we're not in the 50s. Well, isn't it funny? Because what I've been saying for months or a year now is I want a, I want to get involved with the woman who has a job and has her own life and has her own house and has her own that's money. Right. So I don't feel responsible. <laughs> but I, I don't feel responsible, but I am. So it's like... I don't have to, but I have to. <laughs> I love it. Do you see how there's just so many pieces to this giving and receiving? It seems so simple. And when you think about it, it's not. But there's a lot to it. All right. So the second thing for me was like your first. When I get a gift, what's the expectation of me? Do I have to repay? Should I repay? What am I going to owe them? Um, you know, like that experience when my girlfriend bought me lunch. It, oh god it was so uncomfortable but i'm on a mission in this lifetime to sit with what's uncomfortable oh my god that was my next one let it happen <laughs> you know yeah that was my next one so number three for you sarah so my number three was tolerate the uncomfortable feelings and really get to the bottom of it you know obviously i know that i have this history with dad disappointing him his way of loving was giving gifts, but I didn't always want the gift. You know, it was just very complicated. So trying to remember, I'm in a new relationship. This has nothing to do with my past. Really be present. If I'm having some other uncomfortable feelings, they're mine to resolve and not bring them into the relationship. I can share my feelings, but also be grateful. Be grateful for someone that that's kind to be giving you stuff. You know, it's interesting. Let me just say this last thing. I have dated someone else in the past, and this is the distinction, who every, every time he came to my house, he brought stuff that was a gift, but I felt like he was trying to move in. And he'd say, oh, I brought these books for you, or I brought these music for you, or, I brought this, but I didn't want any of it. So with him, there is definitely this motive so, you know, it's definitely something that I brought kind of my discern. furniture. For you. I brought furniture. I brought a suitcase. No, but it would always be disguised as it was for you. Yeah. So it can be tricky. But that's yeah. my la last one. All right. Just my, last, my last one is I'm secretly happy. Oh, yes. So, we love gifts. <laughs> but I can't, but I love them. So I'm secretly, oh, this is perfect. I'm secretly happy about many things. So I'm secret, secretly happy that somebody thought of me. Yes. Because I always feel like nobody ever thinks of me. I think about people all the time. Yes. So secretly, it makes me really happy to get a gift. I just don't want to have to expose myself to the gift in front of somebody. Like if I can go off into my room, I get excited. I can be excited alone, <laughs> you know? Like, I whatever. remember. But anyway, so yeah, I wanted to open it by myself, right? <laughs> 
I, I, you'll often find that in me unless somebody forces me to open a gift. If I get a wrapped gift, I'll put, I'll say, oh, thank you, and put it aside <laughs> because deep down inside, I want to open it alone um, oh because my it's my God. fear. So anyway, so secretly happy that somebody thought of me and gave me a gift and excited about what it is once the fear, you know, the fear is removed. The other thing is buying me lunch or buying me dinner. A friend, well, a friend's bought me lunch the other day. Like I said, my girlfriend bought me lunch. Also secretly happy that yes. I didn't have to spend any money. Yeah. And I got to eat out. Okay. So that's the last one. Really knowing what your inside truth is, is so key. Oh my God. I had a great thought when you were going on about the receiving thing and the feeling happy and yes, receive graciously. And, I mean, oh, isn't there any part of you when he buys you lunch? You're like, yeah, I didn't have to pay. Yeah, and you know what the other thing is? Is um, this last birthday I had someone like Finn was just saying when someone's really thoughtful and gives gifts that are like really he had thought about them and thought about who I was. There is a magical feeling of feeling seen, and that is the magic of gift giving. Like that's why, like when we're talking, it's like not to just give someone because you feel obligated. Oh my god, I have to have a Christmas. Yeah, gift for I my still neighbor. haven't got your birthday present because I haven't had the intuitive thought yet. No. Last year, I think I nailed it. You this year, so I haven't. Gifts. I haven't been able to. It's got to come to me. It's got to mean something. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. And I'm serious. No, I know it doesn't matter, <laughs> but it matters to me. I'm not going to buy you some because I know what? you. You don't want some piece of crap that means nothing. You're absolutely right. And so, I know. Oh, you love journals, but I feel like I've given you nine million journals. <laughs> I have it right there. All right. Uh, we love you. Just notice your feelings around giving and receiving and be more thoughtful about, do I really want to do this? And when you receive something, be gracious. Take, take, take. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. We're out of here. We're out of here. Leave it crazy down.